It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, May 20th is coming up, and it's coming up fast, and that's primary election day. Please, please, please get out and vote. Particularly in the Schuylkill County area, or the, in the 17th Congressional District, it's going to be an interesting race and Republican ticket. Three candidates running. One of them with me today, Dr. Dave Moylan, uh, who is the director of Simon Kramer Cancer Institute, and Dr. Moylan is running on the Republican ticket for the congressional seat. I welcome him again on the Sam LaSanne Show. Doctor, thanks for coming on the show. Sam, I, I mean this. It is always a pleasure to be here. I appreciate that. All right, let's get to the, the meat of the thing. This is a, you know, the country is, as you know, uh, the, the Congress has a entire Congress has a low uh, approval rating. People are just disgusting. I'm hoping that they're going to get out and vote, but they get so sometimes people get fed up, they don't even want to vote. Dr. Dave Moylan, uh, you're running for the U.S. Congress, okay? My question to you is very simply, why? Well, Sam, the decision to run went back to last summer, and it was on July 21st of uh, 2013 that I announced that our celebration of life picnic at the Cancer Center that I would throw my hat in the ring. And what prompted me to make that decision had to do with the sanctity of human life. And this is a pivotal issue for me. And I reviewed the voting record of our previous congressman, Timmy Holden, who had served Schuylkill County for 20 years. And over those 20 years, he was scored with a pro-life voting record of about 76 percent, which is very consistent. Now, in uh, the last year or two, he did vote uh, for Obamacare. and Any vote for the Affordable Care Act is a vote against the sanctity of human life, since it does uh, fund abortion. Well, I reviewed the voting record of our current congressman, uh, Matthew Cartwright. At that time, there had been two uh, votes before Congress that had pro-life implications, and he had voted nay on each of those. I've since updated that review, and a few more came along, and he has now a 100% uh, correction, a 0% pro-life voting record. But Planned Parenthood, that organization, also rates how people are voting, how, what their sympathies are, and he has a 100% Planned Parenthood rating. And I want you to recall that there are upwards of 1.2 million uh, abortions on demand in the United States every year. Planned Parenthood performs about 327,000 of those. And yes, they do crisis pregnancy uh, counseling, but these services end in abortion 94% of the time. So the deck is stacked against the um, unborn. The other thing that uh, prompted me was the uh, history lesson. That's one of my hobbies is looking at military and uh, other history. And I'd like to talk to you and the viewers about Cincinnatus. His name was Lucius Cincinnatus. The year was 458 BC. And by BC, I mean before Christ. And a lot of times you'll see in contemporary uh, notation, BCE, before the Common Era, but I prefer to date it from the birth of our Lord. But in any event, Cincinnatus had been a senator in ancient Rome, and he had retired, probably a forced retirement, but he had retired, and he was working his farm. And what happened was the barbarians were at the gates, and ancient Rome was threatened with its very existence. The Senate went to the farm of Cincinnatus and they asked him if he would consider coming back into office. And basically they made him Caesar. And in 16 days he was able to raise an army and go out and uh, defeat the barbarians and they were paraded in, down the streets of Rome. Well, what did he do next? Well, the Senate said, we want you to be Caesar for life, be, be our dictator. And he refused to do that, took off his robe, and went back out to plow his farm. That is uh, an example of extreme uh, civic virtue, but I think it 
lays the foundation for term limits. And I believe in term limits. And I think three two-year terms in the House of Representatives would be more than adequate. So um, again, Confucius. Confucius said, choose a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, that's what I've been doing for the last 30 years in the field of uh, medicine. I haven't been working a day in my life. I lo love that and would uh, very much like to get back to that after uh, a period of ser civil service. You have three conservative candidates running, you being one of them, okay? Um, and, I mean, you brought up some very, very interesting key issues. Uh, but right now, um, I think um, people know where you stand um, and why you want to run. Now, the, the question is, um, here's Dr. Dave Moylan. Many people know you. A lot of people know you from not only um, uh, the, the medical director of Simon Kramer Cancer Institute and saving thousands of lives over the years, and I applaud you for that. I applaud anyone who does, any doctor who's in there uh, doing what they're doing. Um, but, and you have your own television show, Modern Medicine, uh, which is extremely interesting. Um, you're very visible with a lot of advertising, television advertising, so people know who you are. The difference would be is why then would I vote, why should I vote for you uh, with all due respect to the other candidates? Yes, with due respect. Uh, Sam, <coughs> Congressman Cartwright has a tremendous war chest. And of course, all the candidates have to report every three months how much uh, money is on hand. And the latest report that uh, came out after the 15th of April showed that Matthew Cartwright has in excess of a half a million dollars in the war chest right now. So he's going to be a formidable candidate. The message I'd like to send out to him is that the 17th Congressional District is not for sale. It's off the block. Well, you're, and that's easier said than done. And here again, the, the, the hope that for any election would be um, yes, you have to get the word out you, you, as you're paying for time, you know, the, so, so people can understand who you are. Um, unfortunately, what you don't want to do is buy any election. And, and, and Dave, uh, if, if you allow me to call you Dave, um, that is the reason this country is in such a desperate state because we've let people buy us. Yes. Okay, and, and, and people want to know why the taxes are so high, why they're struggling, why the energy prices, why uh, the uh, no morality left, okay, why they want to secularize everything. They want to know why. They scratch their heads because people bought elections yeah. and they didn't think about them individually, so they paid the price. Um, so what you're saying now, um, uh, and that's going to be a task, we'll talk about those um, uh, these uh, impossible tasks, but here again, why do you feel that you're, you're the most uh, qualified, and why should I vote for you? Yes, uh, if I can <clears throat> get past the uh, primary on May uh, 20th, I think I would be the most electable of the three candidates. And one of the reasons is that um, I've served for the last about two and a half years uh, as coroner for Schuylkill uh, County. And uh, again, the other two gentlemen uh, have not achieved elected office. During this two and a half years, we've modernized the de coroner's department. We've digitalized all the uh, records. And again, it's in a very uh, secure f fashion, but uh, that allows uh, deputies, myself, to have access to these uh, records for immediate review. And in addition to that, we confronted uh, several vexing problems. One was the transportation of decedents around the county or to other uh, counties, and that was a major factor in our budget. And we were able to circumvent that problem by leasing a, a used van for transportation to the county at the rate of $1 per year. So that, that is really helping us with uh, fiscal responsibility. Um, the other uh, issue was we did not have a morgue in the county. Since one of the hospitals went out of the forensic medicine business. So we were able to uh, refit a CAT scan trailer with um, uh, morgue equipment. And we are now collaborating with some of the area pathologists 
uh, are able to carry out uh, post-mortem examinations right in Schuylkill County. Um, education, very important, and in all aspects, you know, uh, we'll talk about employment jobs, but the, the education of our deputies was a prime priority, and we have set up an annual forensic medicine conference. Uh, it's been approved by the Attorney General's office for credit for uh, coroners and Chief Deputy uh, coroners, and uh, we recently had that conference at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. We attracted about 60 participants, and the education uh, presentations were outstanding. So I think uh, in the public arena, I've been able to solve uh, clinical problems uh, with a good effect. And then the other thing is that problem solving has been part of my career, going back to uh, my scientific education at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and then uh, for the last 30 years handling uh, medical problems. And I'd like to present briefly the case of a patient that I uh, recently evaluated. And again, it's not a, a real patient in that it's a composite of several people, but it illustrates the point. <coughs> Gentleman had uh, cancer of the voice box about 10 years ago. He was successfully treated at that time by uh, surgery and radiation. Unfortunately, 10 years later, he either developed a very late recurrence of the disease or he developed a second primary uh, malignancy. But it was in a field that had received prior radiotherapy. What are the options? Well, multidisciplinary approach consult with uh, experts in other fields such as chemotherapy, uh, radical head and neck surgery, and then there's also subspecialists in the field of radiation such as uh, technologies, uh, cyber knife that we've talked about, and then we assimilate all the information, the biopsy results, the history, very important, and then try to come up with a plan. Now. Patients are a little bit like congressmen and other legislators. You can't present an irrevocable, uh, non-negotiable approach, because I think that's part of what has tied up Washington, D.C. and gridlock. But by um, negotiating with the various doctors, the patient, we were able to come up with a plan that will surely benefit this man who has a very difficult problem. The same thing would apply to uh, issues uh, before the Congress. I can't claim to be an expert in every uh, aspect of uh, fiscal monetary policy, um, et cetera, energy, very complicated, climate warming, uh, uh, global warming, climate change. So what we have to do is approach it scientifically, look at the history, very important again, looking at the history, get the expert uh, testimony, and try to assimilate this and come up with a solution. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. Dave Moylan. He is running for U.S. Congress in the 17th Congressional District uh, on the Republican ticket. It's, during the, it's a primary election on May 20th, and we ask you to go to docmoylan.com for additional information. But as I said, learn as much as you can about every candidate and then make the decision. At least you know you have made a value decision. Just staying on the, uh, the same path that you're talking about, about uh, providing solutions for life screening um, concerns, even though uh, you may not have known a specific way of uh, 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 therapy, you were able to be able to get someone who knew that. Uh, better uh, and give you the so in solutions. Okay, I don't think any Congress mo knows everything. They have to go to research. The idea is how do you take that research and make it work? Assimilate it. That's it. Assimilate yeah. it, and that and that's so very important. And I think you'll have. Um, I think if you look at some of the congressmen we have that really are doing that, uh, are are and and some of them are battling. You know the the wall. Okay, uh, because they don't have the majority in the Senate. All right, uh, what they want to do. So we know that you're pro-life, and you've been, you know, you know. It's interesting because uh, a good friend of mine, 
uh, a priest said to me, Sammy, what good is having health education, having edu uh, or health care, having education, having all the things that you want to give to people if you're killing people before they're even born, okay? Which is, so abortion has to do with a lot more. Uh, and um, here again, um, if you're killing a baby who is <laughs> not even born in the womb, uh, if you're 80 some years old and you're not worth anything, what, why are you around? They'll get rid of you. Um, Sam, I think life needs to be protected throughout all of its stages. And we have to recognize that abortion is not health care and euthanasia is not health care. What about the, you know, uh, you know Planned Parenthood is, is just a disaster as far as I'm concerned. They, they profess to tell you that they're going to give you counseling and, and God knows how many people had abortions and are now psyching, now looking for psychological help because they cannot live with themselves and I, and I pray for those people. You know, what about that? See, what about that? Well, certainly there's, uh, the church has many approaches to this, uh, Rachel's Vineyard, mm -hmm. and uh, which is not only for uh, women that have uh, gone through uh, the abortion, but also the uh, husband, uh, boyfriend, whatever. Well, There's you, trauma. One, one, thing you don't, on one thing that you don't want to have, based on my conversations with you, is you, you do not want to have, now listen to me, Dr. Boylan, you do not want to have the endorsement of Planned Parenthood. Okay, because that's the kiss of death as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Pass okay, on that. I'm oh, you, pass okay. On that. You, you do not want to have that. That's my opinion. You have a lot of um, uh, uh, tasks, okay, that are facing you right now. Let's talk about some of those tasks that you have facing to you and what do you intend to do about them. You want to be more specific? Uh, well, when you're, when you, for example, you have the Affordable Care Act, okay? Yes. Uh, and I think you have a plan here. Uh, uh, well, you, you, the, the Affordable Care uh, uh, care right now has, has been said that it's, it cannot be repealed. Uh, Congressman Kelly, Congressman Barletta think differently. Uh, but the point is, um, you, you, you're, you're talking about a 12-point plan to health care. The math is 12-point okay. care. Uh, yeah, let, care. Let me explain that, and maybe we can go to... Uh, um, well, let, well they'll, they'll put that up on the screen right now. And why don't you explain to the people what this well, is? Well, let me tell you who Chad Mathis is. In fact, it's up there now. Uh, Chad Mathis is a young <laughs> physician. He practices orthopedic surgery in Alabama, a little bit uh, south of uh, Birmingham. I've spoken to him on the phone. Uh, if I was in Alabama, he would have my vote, that's for sure. But there's, the Republicans have come up with several counter proposals to the Affordable Care Act. One was proposed by uh, Tom Price, also an orthopedic surgeon from uh, Georgia. And the other, uh, Dr. Paul Brown, family practitioner from Georgia. And they have four, five, six uh, uh, points to their plan. But I was impressed with the comprehensive nature of uh, Chad Mathis's plan. Okay, Sam, we'll put that back up again. We had it up. Okay, so th here it is. Yeah, the so some of this is common to all the plans. But again, I think this is the most comprehensive. And that would be allowing for patients to shop for insurance across state lines. For instance, if Alabama has the best health care for their citizens, citizens could shop in state. And this could lead to charges for the state to compete with other uh, states to come up with the best uh, health program for all citizens. So increased competition is likely to be good uh, across the states. The other is the Kermit Gosnell rule and that basically would prohibit elective abortions after 20 weeks. And I think we saw the little shop of horrors that was uh, in North Philadelphia, and uh, something like that it certainly can't be funded by the taxpayers. The government is b b borrowing uh, 46 cents on every dollar. How can they afford to fund abortion? And number three here would be to create standard deductions for health insurance and amounts ranging from 7,000 to 20,000 could be set aside either for individuals or families respectively. And this would allow individuals and families to have the same benefits as companies on their income tax deductions. And it could save families a great deal of money. 
uh, number four on Chad's uh, program proposals would be to expand individual and family contributions to health savings accounts. And this could increase from 3,000 to 6,000 for individuals and 6,000 to 12,000 for families. And the goal would be to create greater flexibility in healthcare spending by individuals without government interference. Medical liability uh, tort reform. I don't think uh, Congressman Cartwright would like to hear about this since he had made his living uh, as a trial lawyer. But doctors very much uh, practice defensive medicine. And if we could take that burden off them, this is gonna lower health care costs. Finally, or number six, a tax credit for businesses that contribute up to 50% to their employees' health savings accounts. So again, that would encourage the viability of the HSAs. Uh, protection of life. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. And number eight, stopping the health care welfare state. A state's Medicaid funding will have a requirement for those able-bodied adults receiving benefits to seek work. And again, this goes back to the Clinton era when uh, welfare was uh, reformed, and we've gotten away from that. I need, we think we have to look at that again. And certainly some aspects of the Affordable Care Act uh, make sense. And to do away with pre-existing condition limitations uh, is something that could be carried on. Number 10, ensure a small business individual pooling market. And this would create a larger insurance pool for small businesses so they can bring down their uh, costs just the way large corporations do. Number 11, quality measures and outcome rules, which have been created by the Center for Medicare Services. Certainly improving quality and improving efficiency are important to controlling costs. And finally, protecting seniors with their access to high quality care. And there's something out there called the sustainable growth rate formula. That needs to be repealed that would allow Medicare patients continued access to doctors and high quality uh, care. That's something I think that you know that you you would like to definitely see happen. These twelve points, correct? Absolutely, and um, I would be happy to go to Washington and work with uh, Dr. Mathis Dr. to get this Moyle, done. Dr. Moylan, uh, when we look at some of the things that have happened in the country today, and you know you have uh, uh, the rhetoric from the left. Uh, and the wacko liberals out there uh, who just feel that uh, they don't want to face the facts of what's happening. But as they could see, unemployment's going up. The economy is uh, eroding. The uh, morality of the country is going down the tubes. Um, and, and they just want to continue to feed these, um, these lies that are happening. Benghazi, what was your reaction to Benghazi? Well, uh, of course, you're referring to the death, the murder of... Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other patriotic Americans in Benghazi, Libya. That occur occurred on 9-11 uh, of year uh, 2012. And I don't think we had an adequate response to that as a nation. And of course, there was, uh, there's allegations of cover-up. But I think it should fall to Congress to investigate this in a... Uh, nonpartisan uh, fashion. And when I think of my role as coroner, I know there's an autopsy out there, Sam, on this gentleman. And uh, I think that should be made public or certainly the Congress uh, needs to have access uh, to it. Getting, getting back, and we have about four minutes left, will you be electable if you win the primary? Will you be electable? Because right now, the, the, of the odds, as far as money is concerned, he, he, he's going to clobber you with money, okay? Money I'm talking about. 
But when we look at what's happening in the country today, just looking at the polls yesterday, as more and more people are getting affected by this Affordable Care Act and more and more people are realizing how disastrous this is, they're becoming very frustrated with the president and the Democrat Party because they promised them a lot of things that they're not getting. And Pelosi never even read the bill, okay, which is, again, mm -hmm. amazing to me. Um, and listen, if it was the Republicans and they did it, I would be talking about them. So it's not a, it's not a matter of Democrat, yes. Republican. But how will you be electable and what messages, again, will you continue to bring, uh, you know, to your uh, constituents? Well, the Affordable Care Act needs either repeal or repair. Okay, now, is way. it my understanding that Congressman Cartwright supports the Affordable Care Act in its entirety? Yes, a few months ago I attended a town hall meeting that he conducted in Pottsville, and he was enthusiastic about this so bill, he thinks this is, despite it, it, the uh, and I, it, rollout, it, problems it, with the rollout. Was it not said by you, and I did not say this, but did you not say on one of my shows that he said it didn't go far enough? I... I did not say that, but I believe he believes that. Okay, all right. so it wasn't in, it wasn't, yeah. I wanted, okay, so he did not say to go far. But, so, okay, so you have that issue, you have the Benghazi issue. So, of course, he, from what you say, uh, he will be aligning himself or has aligned himself with Pelosi. Is that correct? Yes, he has. Okay, yeah. because I'm only quoting what Barletta, Congressman Barletta and Congressman Kelly said on the show, that, you know, evidently he will, he will be aligning himself with with, with. Now, you did point out there are a few issues, a few things in the Affordable Care Act that are good, like the pre-existing conditions, age 26, where, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're supporting that. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, as a doctor who is out there saving lives for many, many years and the director of the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute, you've seen a lot of miracles, and yet you've tried a lot, and, and sometimes you just, you know, you don't have that um, magic wand, as I say. Um, the, any motivational quotes you have for us? Yes. Um, again, when I first uh, announced that I was going to take on the challenge of uh, trying to unseat Congressman Matthew Cartwright, Tim Holden told me, Doc, it's impossible. I said, Tim, you mean it's a long shot? And he said, no, Doc, it's impossible. And we've been told that the repeal of the Affordable Care Act is another impossibility. It's been tried over 35 times, can't be done. And the protection of the unborn human life, it's been the law of the land, if you will, for the last 41 years. It would be impossible to reverse Roe v. Wade. Well, there is a motivational speaker out there. His name's John Maxwell. And one of his quotations was used as the basis for an ad campaign with Adidas uh, running shoes about 10 years ago. But I just would, would like to quote that. You got 45 seconds. I've got 45 seconds. Impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world that they've been given rather than to explore the power to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion, Sam. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is potential, impossible is temporary. Sam, impossible is nothing. Well, I wish you the best, as I wish all the candidates the best. Dr. Dave Moylan, folks, he's running for U.S. Congress in the 17th Congressional District. Please learn about all the candidates who are running and uh, get the facts. Uh, May 20th. Dr. Dave Moylan's asking for your vote on the Republican ticket. We'll see you next time.